why stars give out light or why do stars give out light? An interesting question. In order to understand that, what we need to do is to understand, first of all, the states, various states of matter. Uh, we're familiar with most of us with, with the idea of a solid, liquid, gas. There is also a fourth state of matter, and that is referred to as plasma. And as you can see here, that it occurs when substances, particularly gases, are under very, very high temperatures. And what happens there is that the electrons tend to separate from the rest of the atom. So there's, if you like, a soup of electrons and, and positively charged particles. We see this uh, in plasma balls, when we've got an electric current that runs through the gas. We also see plasma in situations like lightning, okay, when there's electricity that's running through uh, the air, and we find that the nitrogen and the oxygen uh, exist in a plasma state, a state where the electrons are separated from the rest of the atoms. Now, that still doesn't answer the question, why is it that stars, and, and for that matter, anything, why, does it, why do they give out electromagnetic radiation? Well, James Clerk Maxwell was a brilliant scientist. And what he did was he worked out that uh, electromagnetic radiation effectively was generated when we had a slowing down of or a speeding up of electric charge. So if there was an accelerating charge or decelerating charge, whether it be positive or negative, that would generate electromagnetic radiation. And here you can see this notion of electromagnetic radiation. It's a combination of the electric field and the magnetic field. This is the wave model, but we more also have to be familiar with the photon or the particle model uh, for, for, for light and for electromagnetic radiation. Now, we see uh, Maxwell's idea uh, shown when we generate X-rays. If we have a look at the X-ray machine, what happens here is that we have a heated filament, just as we can have in a bright light and this is made uh, negatively charged and then over here we have a positively charged piece of metal generally speaking this is tungsten and what happens is that uh, we've got a vacuum here we've got a very very high temperature and a high voltage which goes across from here to here that results <clears throat> in electrons jumping from the element here across to the tungsten. When they hit here, they are slowed down. In other words, we have decelerating, slowing down of electric charge. That generates, that generates the, uh, the X-rays, the electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation is generated when we have accelerated or accelerating charge or decelerating charge. So here we've got decelerating charge. And if we have a look at the wavelengths that come from that, uh, you can see here that there is a range. There is a continuous spectrum of X-rays. But we also get some uh, frequencies of the X-rays, which are particularly high. And that's because electrons drop from a very high uh, position of potential energy right back down into the tungsten. Uh, we also see electromagnetic radiation generated in what's called discharge tubes. So here, for example, we've got a hot gas. That gas is very, very hot because there's uh, electricity passing through it. And here we have a spectroscope which enables us to see the various lines that uh, making up this spectrum. And what's making up that spectrum is the electrons falling from outside 
uh, an outside position of the atom back into a lower energy level. So if we have a look at this next diagram, I haven't got any pictures of electrons here, but uh, if an electron falls from, let's say, this particular energy level down to here, it will give out a certain frequency. Or if it falls from here to here, we'll get a photon of a photon of be it light or be it um, ultraviolet light or X-rays or whatever. So this is what uh, this is another way in which our electromagnetic radiation can be generated. Here we see an incandescent light. Now the incandescent light has electrons uh, in this region here in the metal, which are first of all being excited. Uh, and then as they move around in their excitement, they are slowed down. And for this reason, they can produce almost any uh, frequency of electromagnetic radiation. So what we get there is a continuous spectrum. It <coughs> behaves like a black body. If we go back up here to our X-ray machine, this X-ray machine here produced a continuous spectrum. Well, the same idea here with uh, the light. Uh, electrons are moving around a lot. They uh, not, may, may not be in the plasma state, but they're travelling at high velocity. They can collide with other atoms, and in colliding with other atoms, are slowed down, and as they slow down, they give out electromagnetic radiation. Now, another instance in which we see the production of electromagnetic radiation, <coughs> excuse me, is a situation in a device that's known as a cyclotron. Now, in this cyclotron, what happens is that electrons are made to spin faster and faster inside a circle. And as a result of that, they undergo acceleration. Now, we remember that any charge which undergoes acceleration will give out electromagnetic radiation. And this is exactly what happens here. It's called synchrotron light. And that synchrotron light can come out at any frequency. It depends upon what uh, speed the uh, electrons are made to spin around in that uh, cyclotron and that they actually use that then for medical purposes. But they can produce quite a range of, uh, of electromagnetic radiation of different frequencies. So basically that is it. That's how uh, stars give out, uh, give out their light. <clears throat> the electrons uh, are made to either slow down, generally speaking, air or speed up or drop from a high energy level to a lower energy level. Most of them give out a continuous spectrum because the electrons are slowed in any number of ranges. When it comes to gamma radiation, the story is a little bit different. What happens there is that the gamma rays actually, or the gamma photons, come from the nucleus and the reason they come from the nucleus is that uh, they come from a situation in which the nucleus is unstable and the, there is a rearrangement of the uh, protons and neutrons within the nucleus going from a higher energy level to a lower energy level. And when they do that, they give out electromagnetic radiation. It's a little, it's a little bit similar to the electrons going from a high energy level to a low energy level, but this time it's the particles within the nucleus rearranging themselves, going from a, an arrangement where there is a high energy level down to a lower energy level within the nucleus. So those are the reasons why light and a range of frequencies can come from stars and our sun.